Helping Youth Prosper is a federally funded project supported by the U.S. Department of Agriculture's National Institute for Food and Agriculture. And our specific project focus is to really support middle school age youth to help them reach and accomplish the goals and dreams that they set for themselves to aspire to be healthy adults. Five years ago, colleagues across Virginia State University and Virginia Tech's Cooperative Extension Systems saw a need to really support middle school age youth to help them overcome some hurdles and obstacles that were coming their way, some including violence, substance misuse, and other issues. And so we rallied together to identify strategies that we know work to seek funding and bring those strategies to communities here in Virginia. When the project started, we began implementing programs, some in schools and some as part of entire family units. At the school level, we trained teachers to implement some programming within their seventh grade health and PE classes so that we could reach all of the youth uh, in that entire school system, building life skills uh, across the lifespan. Then we wanted to um, circle around those young people knowing that they go home to family. So it's not just enough to help give the information and build the skills and confidence amongst the young people, but we need the people in their corner to be able to come alongside them and help boost them as well. And that's an opportunity where young people come for an hour while their adult caregivers are there for an hour in two separate rooms and they're learning information and tools, all that come back to supporting that young person, setting and accomplishing the goals that they have for their lives. For the family-based program, we had some parents and youth that really appreciated the information. They took hold of it, they applied it, and they saw some incredible impacts in their lives almost immediately. For me, it has uh, helped my family co become closer. It has helped us a lot more time during the weeks to spend time together. We have learned about each other and we have uh, enjoyed doing the fun activities that the 4-H staff uh, put together. Coming here for seven weeks, it, it has been an awesome experience. You know, we're learning as parents and our children are learning just as well. So I think active learning, active learning and listening are very important. I learned how to um, work, uh, get through peer pressure in a certain amount of steps. They say, um, meet me after school, behind the behind school or something like that. And you have, you have to keep on asking them questions so they clear, so you can clarify with them what they want you to do. And they eventually tell you like they want to do something bad, like you, they want you to try drugs or something. You try to get them to like, go do something else with you, like go play a video game or go to the park. And if they're not like listening or going with you, then you just gotta stay on your way to stay out of trouble. This program has helped me understand my family. It, it has gotten me closer to my family and it is fun. And I am grateful for the 4-H Strengthening Families program. We wanted these middle school age youth, many of whom had never set foot on a college campus, to cross that barrier and have that experience. So we were able to take youth to Virginia State University where they had an opportunity to ask questions of current students, gain additional information, and then attend an exciting football game. We also recognized the need for families to come together and so we were able to host two separate weekends of family camp where families went away together to one of our 4-H educational centers. They canoed, they fished, they hiked, but they also had informational sessions around things like why to avoid vaping, how to contend with mental health issues, how to manage stress, and how to set and accomplish goals. We have also had an amazing day back at Virginia State University where youth came and they were able to choose from an array of workshops, from learning how to grow their own uh, food and containers, to developing stress jars, goal charts, 
all kinds of information and there was an incredible motivational speaker that started them off and sent them off with the tools and the confidence knowing that they can set and accomplish their goals. Finally, we wrapped up the project this summer with a mental health conference, ensuring that we equipped those young people as well as the adults in their lives with additional information and tools and resources to attend to their own good mental health. I think that this was a really, really fun um, and amazing opportunity for a bunch of youth to be able to learn how to expel their emotions and not work on hiding it behind a mask. One of my favorite parts was when we learned how to meditate and following close behind was when we learned how to make stress choice to shake up all of our emotions and then learn how to wind down. I think that one of my favorite parts of community outreaches is getting to meet all different types of people and getting to see all the different things that they're good at, all of their gifts and their talents. At the Building Greatness event, I really enjoyed going to the different workshops and going around and getting to see all of these adults who are masters in their different skills and who all like different things and who get to do that on a daily basis. And I think that's really inspiring, especially for younger kids because they get to see other people who are doing what they love for a living and who are doing well in life. And I think that's also very, very cool. With all of the great impacts and the many lives we've been able to touch and improve through this project, there's still a lot of work to do. We know that nearly half of young people have experienced some mental health disorder in their already short-lived life. We also know that by the time youth reach the 12th grade, nearly one out of three have experimented with some type of illicit drug. As we close out this project, it's so exciting to look at the number of young people that have increased their competence and their confidence, knowing how and believing that they can set and accomplish the goals that they have for their lives and avoid negative behaviors. We want to especially thank our funder, the U.S. Department of Agriculture's NIFA and SIFAR program for supporting this effort in our communities. Recognizing the need and seeing the impacts that can be made all of you caring adults, I charge you to look for the opportunity to be a change maker for youth in your communities.